Okay, class, let's get started. As I said last Friday, we'll be spending this class period discussing the next group project. As usual, the groups will be changing again, and in a few minutes, you'll all be breaking into your groups to spend the last portion of the hour working together. As you already know, this is your poetry project. Uh. I know. The theme of the project, though, is the poem as artifact. We all know what we mean by poem. You've already read plenty throughout the year. But what do we mean by artifact? Something that tells us about a particular time or place in history. Thank you, Sheila. Precisely. An artifact is something that tells us about a particular time and place in history. So, can a poem, or any art for that matter, be an artifact? Can a poem tell us something about a particular place and time in history? We've already read some poetry that does just that. Have we not? Can anyone recall uh, an author or a poem that would be a good example? Go ahead, Maurice. That World War I poem, the one with the Latin name by Wilfred Owen? Very good, Maurice. Dulce et decorum et by Wilfred Owen is a perfect example. His poem paints a pretty grim picture of warfare. But the poet also tells us something more, something about war in general. Does anyone remember what the Latin phrase at the end means? Wilfred Owen calls it the old lie. Dulce et decorum est pro patria mori. It is sweet and glorious to die for one's country. Through this poem, we are given a window into a soldier's experience of war. This poem is an artifact because it tells us something about a particular time, World War I, and a particular place, because we know that Lieutenant Owen was on the front lines in the trenches. Can anyone name another poet who has left us an artifact? Kira? Anna Akhmatova. Her poem Requiem talks about political persecution in Russia. Very good, Kira. Anna Akhmatova's poem, Requiem, was written in response to the purges of Joseph Stalin. The purges were the mass imprisonment of artists and political activists in Russia. In Akhmatova's case, her son was imprisoned for simply being the son of a counter-revolutionary. As the story goes, Akhmatova had stopped writing during that period as it was far too dangerous for artists that didn't follow the party line. She, like many other women of the time, would show up each day to hold vigil outside the prison in hopes of some news of a loved one. Let's see what Akhmatova tells us about that time and place. Sheila, will you read this passage from Requiem? There I learned how faces fall apart, how fear looks out from under the eyelids, how deep are the hieroglyphics cut by suffering on people's cheeks. There, I learned how silver can inherit the black, the ash wand, overnight, the smiles that faded from the foreign spirit, tears dry coughing sound. And I pray not only for myself, but also for all those who stood there in bitter cold or in the July heat under the red blind prison wall. Thank you, Sheila. Anna Akhmatova's poem has certainly become an artifact of her time and place. No matter the time or place, whenever wonderful or horrible things are happening in our world, art is always one of the ways we respond to all the joy and pain of being alive. And that art then becomes a record, a record of the human experience. And considering it is one way we can unlock the past, so we can connect with history and the people who lived it. Would, uh, would Walt Whitman's uh, poem about Abraham Lincoln count? When lilacs last in the dooryard bloom. Absolutely, Billy. That's a perfect example. Um, now, class, for this project, each group is going to produce a video or a slideshow set uh, of a reading of a poem uh, that talks about something from a certain place in time. Um, I've prepared a video for you as an example. My example that I chose was The Old Neighborhood by Andrea Carter Brown, which was written in response to the 2001 September 11th uh, terrorist attacks. After watching the video, I'll go over the instructions for the project. 
The Old Neighborhood by Andrea Carter Brown Where is the man who sold the best jelly donuts and coffee you sipped, raising a blue Acropolis to your lips? The twin brothers who arrived in time for lunch hour with hot and cold heroes where liberty dead ends at the Hudson. The courteous, small-boned Egyptian in white robe and crocheted skullcap in the parking lot behind the Greek Orthodox shrine, whose bananas and dates you could always count on. How about the tall, slim, dark brown man with dreadlocks cascading to his waist, who grilled Hebrew national franks to perfection and knew just the right amount of mustard each Kanish wanted? The cinnamon skinned woman for whose roadie people lined up halfway down church? The falafel cousins who remembered how much hot pepper you preferred? Don't forget the farmers who slept up from Cape May twice a week at dawn to bring us whatever was in season at its peak. Last August, blueberries and white peaches. What about the lanky fellow who sold green and red and yellow bears and fish and snakes in plastic sandwich bags with twist ties? His friend, a block away, who scooped still worn nuts from a copper cauldron into palm-sized wax paper sacks he twisted at the corners to close? The couple outside the post office with their neatly laid out golden books. The shy Senegalese with briefcases of watches except in December when they sold Christmas trees. The Mr. Softy who parked every evening rush hour by the cemetery to revive the homeward hurrying crowd. I know none of their names, but I can see their faces clear as I still see everything from that day as I ride away from the place we once shared. Where are they now? And how? Okay, there are several books up here that you can choose a poem from, or you can also search the internet for one. However, be careful when choosing because you have a lot of work to do. You may use video or still images, or you can create a short film in which you appear. You may choose one group member to read the poem aloud, or you may read it as a group. Be creative, but keep in mind that the finished product has to be under two minutes. After the videos have been presented to the class, you will each prepare a four to five hundred word reflection about your group poem, another group's poem, or one of your own choosing. Please locate your name in one of the five groups listed on the board, then separate into them. Again, decide on a poem the whole group can work with so that you can start your project. You may begin. Please move into your groups.